Hey everybody, welcome to Champaign, Illinois. Wonderful. Where Ohio State will not be coming in the most uh, 2020 development of all time. It's a uh, Black Friday for the program. Uh, the Buckeyes uh, have returned more positive COVID tests. They will not be traveling to Illinois on Saturday. The game is canceled. Uh, the program has shut down all team activities uh, until that gets back under control. It tells you that according to the Big Ten protocols, that means they are now in the uh, red-red situation. Uh, so likely uh, looking at double-digit positive tests for the Buckeyes. We still will not be naming specific players that are afflicted at this point. We know that Ryan Day uh, tested positive. Um, was not going to travel with this team to Illinois, and now nobody is. Um, this this is a bad situation, Berm. You you know they didn't they made it till the end of the week. That immediately shifts the focus to Michigan State next week, and now that one would seem to be in an extreme jeopardy of happening. And then Ohio State would potentially be dropping below the preseason minimum requirement of six games to compete for the Big Ten championship. All of these things are. Uh, a mouthful and hard to really map, wrap your mind around because if it had happened in March, I'm not sure that any of what I just said would have made sense. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the thing, right? I mean, the key word you just said, and, and amidst all that very difficult stuff to deal with, is the preseason. That was the preseason standard for making it to the Big Ten championship game, right? Yeah. I guess the Big Ten showed zero flexibility before the season and put themselves in this position now where teams like Ohio State and Wisconsin are in the serious jeopardy of being unable to play in the Big Ten championship game. The question is, do they have any flexibility in changing it? And I don't I don't know. Nobody knows the answer. I mean, we, we were getting off of the highway to pull into our <laughs> hotel when the news broke uh, that the game is going to be canceled. And if we're just calling a spade a spade, it seems very unlikely Ohio State will play at Michigan State next week, period, because the program will shut down. As we've seen around the other teams in the country, you start to see these double-digit numbers. It's probably going to double by next week, and then you're going to have a, a bigger problem, and then it will take two weeks or so to get things back to normal. It's what Wisconsin went through earlier this season. It's what Florida went through. The difference is the SEC allowed for some, some flexibility. The Big Ten didn't, and for everybody watching and listening, all preseason, uh, there was a lot of anger from us because this was so inevitable. This was going to happen. And it sucks for Ohio State that it happens now instead of in the first week of the season like it did for Wisconsin. Um, but I guess the question is, where do you go from here other than hope that that culture is strong enough to get all these guys that came back for this season to say, you know what, screw it. We're going to stay here for another month because playing Michigan one more time on senior day in, in Ohio Stadium is going to matter more now than maybe ever just for your your legacy and your, and your memories of playing at Ohio State. I mean, it's also possible that, you know, Ohio State could get into the college football playoff without having played right. that many games. That's getting way down the road. A lot of things would have to uh, <laughs> break just right. Um you know, the college football playoff committee on Tuesday night had Ohio State at number four with not really the most elaborate body of work already. That's maybe skipping ahead a few steps in this conversation. Uh, look, I, you know, I get it that um, people wonder if college football should have ever been played in the midst of a pandemic. You know, it was proven that this game could be played pretty safely in September and October. Now you look at what's happening. This isn't, it's not football that is, necessarily leading to these spikes but that's not that's not the point <clears throat> when you look back at how the big 10 handled this situation in august uh and you remove that flexibility that's the part that absolutely defies belief and will never make any sense and then when you when you decide to correct that or make an effort to and then go with this schedule to play nine games in nine weeks while the numbers are going in this direction and removing, you know, the college football playoff, refusing to help or push back, um, the Big Ten not recognizing that you you had to have some bye weeks bought, built in so that you could move teams around. Uh, you know, Ohio State's having already lost the game against Maryland. You know, that was through no fault of their own. 
and really you can't say that this is Ohio State's fault. I think maybe uh, Maryland was ju was judged a little too harshly. They, you know, made a move before they were in the red red threshold that Ohio State is in now, and they wound up being there the next week. You know, I don't know. You can't control it. I think from what we've heard, like everybody seems to be relatively healthy for the Buckeyes. Um, you know, Ryan Day, the same situation, but it just, I can't understand how we got to this place. Well, there's that, that old adage, right? If you pl fail to plan, you plan to fail. And you, everyone saw this coming and, and especially in the Midwest, it's not the same in the Midwest as it is in, in the, in Florida or out West. Flu season happens every year in the Midwest. I mean, it's not unusual. It's not unexpected that people, when they're forced to spend more time inside, are going to be put into a worse position when it comes to things like viruses. That's what happens every single year. And obviously, this virus is different than the flu and, and seemingly uh, more contagious and clearly something that we as a country haven't entirely got a handle on. Um, but as you said, this is a not about football, but we cover Ohio State football. And from a football perspective, there should have been a way to navigate through this without putting one of the best programs in the country in a position where if they were forced to schedule or, or cancel the game on the schedule or postpone it, that they would be punitively damaged for it. And that's what's happening. And, and there are a lot of people who shook their head and said, oh, well, you know, the, the Big Ten commissioner is doing this on purpose. He wants it to fail. I don't I don't I don't know if that's true. It would cost his league tens of millions of dollars. But it certainly seems to be a bizarre power play for the, the presidents around the league and the commissioners around the league when they could have started in September just the way that the SEC did and allowed themselves a month to, to move things around that they chose not to. And, and I, I don't think you're ever going to see um, anyone forgive them for that. But none of that really matters now. I mean, so it's about the, the college football playoff. And again, we don't know these answers. What do they do? They should just push back a month anyway. We were talking about it in the drive here. <laughs> There's no reason that everyone in college football, with all these outbreaks happening around the country, shouldn't just shut down for three weeks. And then kick back up and play the college football playoff at the end of January. That would make perfect sense. <laughs> but nothing that's, makes sense. That's not that's not the situation here. Sense is not going to ever enter into the conversation. Yeah, and, and I don't know. I mean, you feel terrible for these kids. And again, I, I don't want to sound callous because obviously this disease affects a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And um, anyone who is seriously ill or lost people for it, I, I offer my sincere condolences to it. But when we're talking about 19, 20 year old men who are in the best shape of anyone in, in the world, the, the, uh, the immediate effects are pretty minor. And, you know, we're still trying to figure out the long term effects, obviously. So I understand that plays into some of the um, cautiousness, but I'm not an epidemiologist. I should probably shut up about it on, <laughs> on that perspective. But we're reacting at the same time folks are at home. So, I mean, it, it's just trying to wrap uh, the head around all of and, these things. And from the you know, football perspective, Berm, if you look, the tests are going up. Um, there are a couple things at play here. To try and get into the Big Ten Championship game, you know, Ohio State would now need the average number of games to drop. If it can get to seven, which, you know, with more cancellations, that's a possibility, then the minimum number of games would be five. Okay, so can you get to five if you don't play this week and next week? Sure. If you play in the rivalry game on December 12th, you can get to five and potentially qualify for the Big Ten Championship game that way. Well, we've not uh, seen any team in the country lose three straight weeks. Yeah. So that that it seems realistic. Get to that point, how many players are then missing? Because everyone who tested positive this week, um, whatever that exact number is, they will not play in the next three weeks. Um, this really this positive test started arising on Wednesday. That would put them into the middle of that week that was supposed to be before the Big Ten Championship game on December 19th. So those people won't play a game. They would not play uh, in the horseshoe against the Wolverines. Um, and then the college football playoff, how are they going to evaluate that? Who is it? How would that impact it? There, there are so many questions and no answers here. And really where this is heading is just a lost opportunity, a lost season for one of the most talented teams one of the most talented players that any of us have ever seen at Ohio State. Um, 
a special opportunity. And just even beside that, they just wanted to play a full schedule. And they really got screwed by the decision makers. But what they're going to lose beyond that is a chance to make history. And they, I don't see how that's going to happen for them at this point. The, the deck is now decidedly stacked against them. Yeah, without some arbitrary decisions made by the college football playoff committee to say, hey, you know what? We believe Ohio State's one of the top four teams in the country regardless. We're just going to put them there, which obviously seems unlikely to happen, but you never know. I mean, their their job is to make money. Yeah. If they really want to, to do that, everyone with eyeballs knows Ohio State is one of the four best teams in the country. Yeah. Um, and so we don't know what happens, but it's certainly going to be a bumpy ride from here to the end of the season whenever that officially happens. But um, it's it's hard to even, you know, know how to react to this because, again, we – we waited until almost <laughs> six o'clock to start driving to Illinois, <laughs> and we're told the game's on, the game's on, the game's on. Um, even you know an hour ago, and then uh, and then that happens. It's a uh, it's a shocker, um, but as Berm said, whenever, however, wherever this season takes shape, uh, we will continue to provide that coverage at Letterman Row. This uh, a pretty stunning turn of events for the Buckeyes. Yeah, hard to be ever prepared for what. Um, what has transpired here. Maybe in 2020 you should be, expect the unexpected, but this was, um, I mean, this is a situation that we've never encountered in our careers covering no, this if, team. If, if uh, you would have told me when this season started that it may very well end in a Champaign, Illinois hotel room on a Friday night with um, uh, sitting on a couch with Austin talking about this stuff, uh, I would have called you crazy. But 2020 has thrown... A million different curveballs, and I was never a good curveball hitter. So <laughs> I'm finding out that the rest of the world ain't either. Everyone can hit a fastball, folks. Yeah, we got we got curveball changeup, however you want to call it. Use your cliche. We got one. Ohio State will not travel to Champaign, Illinois. Berm and I are here, but we're going to head back back home for the next step and see what happens with the Buckeyes as they deal with uh, positive te- positive COVID tests within the program currently shut down. Uh, and awaiting next step. He's Berm. I'm Austin Ward. Stay with us at Letterman Row.